Hi everyone, I'm Nathan from TheEbookReader.com. For this video, I'm going to show you how the Kindle Oasis handles the various types of PDF files. Uh, I'll walk you through the different features available and show you some different tips. Uh, so, start things off, there are a couple of different ways you can add PDFs to your device. Uh, you can just sideload them using the old traditional method with a USB cable, or you can use uh, your email address. The, each Kindle has an email address up in your settings menu. You can email them to it or you can use a sent to Kindle app and if you do it those ways it will get added to your Amazon account so uh, it'll be available on your other Kindle devices and apps as well. So once you get your uh, PDFs on your device you can use the dock sort section to just view your PDFs. Uh, instead of viewing everything else on there you can just uh, sort it by your side loaded documents which also includes your other side loaded content as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you some of the PDF features here. Let's load up a book. So as you can see in the default view, it's uh, very hard to read a PDF of this nature. I mean, it just depends on the individual file, how it's going to be formatted. Obviously with the Oasis' 6-inch screen, this PDF renders quite uh, small. The text is pretty hard to read. Actually, it's not too hard to read if you have good eyesight, because if we zoom in here, I don't know, let's see here. If you zoom in, it can actually see pretty good, but the, co the Kindle uh, software, it doesn't have any margin crop features, which is sort of unfortunate. Uh, so let's open up this dialog here. We do have a couple of margin options, but what they do is they make the margins bigger instead of smaller. So um, it's already on the smallest one by default. So what you need to do in this instance is switch it over to landscape mode. So PDFs work a lot better in landscape mode on the Kindle Oasis. It just fits the screen better, as you can see here. Uh, let's get this dialog out here. Uh, so now we can actually see the the writing a lot better and it got rid of a lot of the uh, wide margins because this particular PDF had those wide margins in, lands or in portrait mode but here in landscape mode it fits it to the edges a lot better and just a lot easier to read in general. So I used to like complain about PDFs on Kindle devices because I didn't think they were that uh, good for PDFs but I've kind of changed my tune. I really do like reading manuals like this. Uh, on the uh, Kindle Oasis and the Kindle Paperwhite too. Now, ever since they upgraded to the 300 PPI screen, the small text sizes are a lot easier to read uh, with the higher resolution screen. Everything shows up very clearly, and it also helps if you come in here in the settings and have that uh, boldness option or the uh, contrast darken option. So normally it's like right here. Um, if you just come in here initially, you can go ahead and darken that text so that makes it look better than it does just by default, so it makes it darker. So the page buttons work as you would expect on the Oasis. You just have to tap the page forwards button, page backwards button. You can invert these in the settings menu to have them set up however you like. I really do like having the Oasis in landscape mode too, so it suits it well because it fits well. It fits comfortably in your hand and you can just rest the thumb over the button there. As you see with PDFs, it does do the full page refresh every time where you get that black a flash in between page turns with ebooks it doesn't do that because you can turn that off but with PDFs it always does that because of the added graphics uh, you need to have the screen refreshing more or you're gonna get a lot more ghosting on screen so the regular on-screen features work for PDFs like they do with ebooks so you can highlight words you can look stuff up in the dictionary what is odd about this particular PDF however is that it doesn't seem to recognize the language even though it's clearly English so if we go over the dictionary here it says uh, your device doesn't support this language right here, so we need a different uh, dictionary, but obviously it's in English, so uh, I don't know what it's talking about. So uh, PDFs can be a little unpredictable in that way. Uh, so if we load up this PDF, uh, which is also in English, it has no problem recognizing uh, the language, and the dictionary works just fine. So if we use the dictionary on this one, um, it pops up just fine. So it's just sort of uh, weird with PDFs. It's one of those things... Uh, they're a little bit more unpredictable than ebooks. Uh, things don't always work uh, as smoothly. Like if uh, you're highlighting something, uh, oftentimes it will uh, highlight extra stuff. So it's not quite as precise as it is with ebooks um, when you're doing the highlighting. So the, uh, the uh, highlighting can be a little bit more hit or miss, though once you get it going, it's not so bad. It just depends on the particular PDF. So uh, I really do like having that option, though, because when you're using PDFs, it makes it nice and easy. Uh, to organize your content like if you wanted to take notes and add highlights and then you just come over here to your notes tab and then you can find all your highlights exactly where they were you can jump to that page immediately so that just makes everything easier being able to access that uh, from your go to tab and then you can add text notes to everything as well so if you want to run searches you just come up here and type the term and then it will give you this dialog uh, where you can scan through each one uh, where it appears in your book. 
Okay, so active hyperlinks work. If you tap on a hyperlink, it will take you to that page. And then if you come up here and then hit the back button, it will take you back. So you can use the uh, go to option for navigating. It'll bring up the table of contents and you can jump around your book that way. Uh, it doesn't have that fast scan feature like you have in eBooks where you can swipe up from the bottom. Uh, it doesn't have that feature for PDFs, unfortunately. You can also uh, jump to specific pages if you wanted to. Just add it in your page location option right here. You also have the uh, sharing option. And then you can also just run searches from there as well. So if you found a term that you wanted to search for again, you can just hit that search option right there. You can got the different options to search. And once again, you have the dialogue where you can jump around. So another zooming method is you can double tap to zoom in, which works well on dual column PDFs like this. And then it will follow that column. And you can use the page buttons and it will scan down the column. It will follow it and it will go over to the second column as well. Sometimes it will zoom out and show you the full page before it does that. So this is the downside with the double tap zoom method is that if there's any variation in the text, it will have problems uh, with the double tap because it doesn't know where to zoom. Um, so with this particular PDF, it has this uh, image up here, and so it gets confused with the uh, auto zoom. It doesn't know how to handle that, and it kind of messes things up. So uh, it's not the most reliable method, but if you just have a regular text-based PDF, it does work quite well, and then the pages uh, advance when you're using the page buttons, which is nice. So another zooming option is using pinch zooming. So you can pinch zoom anywhere you want on a PDF and adjust the size that way. And then it gets this little option up here that shows you where you're at on the screen. Then you can just scroll around like this and it uses the partial refresh mode. So scrolling is pretty smooth uh, that way. So the only problem with using this kind of zooming method is there's no way to turn pages while you're zoomed in. And then once you use the page button to turn a page, it will actually zoom it back out. So that's basically only useful for like one page at a time if you're just zooming in on a particular uh, part of a page because uh, it's just not very good for navigating because uh, obviously once you start using this, I mean, you can do that, but then there's no way to advance the page at that zoom level. So uh, anytime you advance the page, you're going to have to re-pinch zoom and go back in uh, doing it that way. So yeah, there's still the same zooming options that have been on here for a while. They have, Unfortunately, they haven't added any new features to PDFs on Kindles in a long time. So, I mean, it's still the same setup as we've had for a long time. Uh, like I said, I do think it works pretty well in landscape mode. Uh, it just depends on the particular PDF. So this PDF, is obviously, it's not going to be great in landscape mode because the text is still really small with the dual margins. But it is doable. I mean, you can read that. It just sort of depends on your preference, like how uh, small text you like to read. But that, on the high-resolution screen, I mean, that is very easily readable if you have uh, good eyesight, if you don't have any problems with that. So you can use the double tap zoom method uh, in landscape mode as well. So that'll increase the size even more. So some people often wonder what size PDFs you can load on here. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, this PDF right here, it's about 90 megabytes, and it, the Kindle doesn't have any problem displaying it or turning pages quickly, though it does bog down from time to time. Uh, I think it's sort of like caches pages or something because sometimes you'll get to an end of a page. Like right here, I just hit the button and it wasn't responding. So uh, sometimes it can kind of bog down. Uh, if you're just sitting here, once you get it, uh, if you're reading at a normal like pace, it actually goes quite uh, rapid. But like I said, if you're just hitting the button a whole bunch of times, it will bog down. And it does start to get a little bit slower then. So you can add bookmarks to PDFs like you can eBooks. You just got to tap in the upper right corner there. The only uh, downside with it, or you can uh, use the uh, option right in here in the settings menu. Um, the only problem with that is it does not show you the window like it does on uh, eBooks. So like on eBooks, if you have multiple uh, bookmarks, it'll show you like a little window here where you can see them. But it doesn't do that with uh, PDFs. Like it doesn't have that fast page scan feature that eBooks have. So if you wanted to organize your PDFs into a collection or something, you just have to create a collection. You can just uh, hold down on it and you can uh, create a collection here. Like if you wanted a PDF collection, you could create a collection just for PDFs if you wanted to organize. Or Okay, so the Kindle uh, devices, they don't have any onboard reflow option. So, I mean, if you just have a text-based PDF, it's not going to have an option for reflow. But if you do email it to your device, you can convert it that way and it will reflow it. So uh, it will give the same option as reflow. 
if you email it to your Kindle, like if you have a text-based one, it just doesn't have it on the device. And it actually works quite well if you did want to have uh, your text-based uh, PDF reflow. But if you do a PDF like this with images and a different layout, it's not going to work well with reflow. So you're just better off using like landscape mode or something because uh, that's really only useful for ebooks that have or just text and nothing else. It, it doesn't work with any kind of graphics or uh, tables very well usually. Okay folks, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this PDF review right here. Check out ebookreader.com for some additional info and of course I've also got a full review posted to the Kindle Oasis if you wanted to see that as well. So uh, check that out if you want some more info. Thank you guys for watching and you have a good day.